Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial. So today we're going to look into the creation of a Corpleth map. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe below because that way you can get every week a notification of a new video that I upload about Dash by Plotly, new data visualization graphs, and just cool data that will teach you a little bit more about the world and the trends that are happening. All right, so a Corpleth map is a map that allows you to differentiate between regions, countries, um, zip codes, whatever you want, just areas of the map according to or using a color scheme that's based on a certain value. So in this case the value is life expectancy but it could also be a value of graduation rates, it could be a number of soldiers per country, it could be any, any value you really want. And it's gonna use the color to, to allow us to differentiate. That's really the basics of how a Corpleth map works. All right, um, we're gonna use data that's from data uh, from Plotly Express. We'll go into that in a few minutes. We'll take a look at that, but it's built in a data set. Um, we're gonna open uh, the links. I would really recommend that you go into the YouTube description below the video and just open it and open the links that are there because these are the links that we're gonna look into and it will really help you follow throughout the video uh, the code and, and learn how we're doing and what we're doing. Uh, also, if you've seen this video already and you want to jump to a certain section of it, you want to see, for example, how I do the, the figure again, or you want to see the callback section, just go back into the, go under the video in the description and go into the certain links where you would see that the time links and you can jump to a certain section of the video. All right, so let us get started. All right, so I'm going to use this environment. I just call this dash 1.8, 1.0, You can uh, my own environment. It just means that I'm using version 1.0 of Pandas, 4.5 of Plotly, and version 1.8 of Dash. You can probably get away with using other versions, but if something doesn't work, it could be because these are different versions. So the first thing you want to do is obviously import all the libraries, and then we're going to start. Uh, let's look at the data first. Let's see what the data is all about before we really go into it. So let's print the data, see what it gives us. All right, so here's the data. We are going to play around with this data set, which really we're gonna be using country, gonna be using the year, the life expectancy, how many years you're expected to live in that country, and the ISO alpha right here, which is um, the way a Corpleth map um, identifies what region or what country of that map uh, we're talking about. All right, I can close this for now. Um, we're gonna import a um, uh, CSS form or style sheet that's going to help us with the style of the web page. Here we start the app and then we're going to go into the layout. All right, so in the layout you'll see that the first section of the web page is going to have a graph. We're not sure what graph yet, it's just one graph we're going to populate later using the data. And then in the second section is going to be the input, the button, and the div. And these are the three things. The input is this, the button is this, and the div is what's going to show what's going to come out. It's just the data. You don't need this. It just helps with, with understanding and visualizing what data the user has clicked on. All right. So let's go into the input. I would recommend opening this website, or this web page, sorry, input examples in Dash, because this is what we're going to be working with. And it'll give you some examples, but you want to scroll all the way to the end and just look at the references. My recommendation, pause here for a few seconds, look at all these, all these um, properties in the documentation, just so you get familiar with them, because um, we're not going to use most of them. We're going to use uh, ID, uh, we might use um, max and minimum, and I think we're also going to use a value, uh, but it's worthwhile getting familiarizing, familiarizing yourself with this so um, you know what we're talking about. All right, so ID, we're going to call it input state, just so I remember that um, later on. I'm going to have to remember that, and that's easier for me to remember. Type is going to be number. It could be text. It could be string. It could be list. Here, we're going to type in the number because we're going to do years. Input mode, numeric. You can go into the documentation to see what that means, but it really just helps 
um, the browser to understand what data type is going to be in there. Value is 2007, meaning that the default value, as soon as a user loads the page for the first time or the second time, the default value is going to be 2007, so it's not going to be empty input. Max is going to be 2007 because we know, well, if you open the data, you'll see that 2007 is uh, the highest year that they have in the data set, and 1952 is uh, the um, oldest year in the data set. We're going to do step five, which means that it's going to jump from 1952, not not in in jumps of one in one year or two years going to jumps in five so it's going to jump from 1952 to 1957 right here 2007 2002 1997 so I want jumps to five because I know that's how the data set is is set up I don't have data for every year I only have data for every five years so that's why I'm putting step five and I'm going to put require true because I want this input um, cell to have something in it. And if it doesn't have anything in it, I would like the, 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 the Dash app, the web app is going to turn red, showing the user that something has to go in there. That's why it's required true. If it was false, it would not become red. All right, so that's the input button. The input uh, cell, sorry. Um, we're going to use HTML. We're going to call a button with HTML. And the button. Also, the documentation is right here that you open, so you can read more about buttons and all the references it has. We're going to use only three of them, all the properties, sorry. And we're going to be using um, the ID, we'll call it submit button. Uh, end clicks, it just counts the number of times the user clicks on the button, so the default is zero. And children is submit, so children is just what the button is going to call. It's going to be called submit, you can call it play, you can call it whatever you want. I call it submit. And then... The div below is where we're going to see the data that's going to be outputted. And this is just a style of, the, of all these. I want it to be in the middle right under the graph. Perfect. So let's go into the callback. This is the callback decorator. And this is really how it brings the whole data visualization, makes the whole data visualization an interactive data visualization. And it's a lovely section of the code. Okay, so what we're going to do here, we're going to use two, we're going to take two data points that the user is going to play around with, which is going to be the input of the submit button, the input of the button, in, uh, specifically the number of clicks for that button, and we're going to be looking at the value of the input state. Remember the input state was the ID belonging to input. So we're going to look at the value of that, but we're going to we're going to use state. We're not going to use input. And the difference between state and input is this. So these are state. Go down below. A state allows you to pass along extra values without firing the callback. So what does that mean? It means that because this is state, the input state, the value that I'm putting in there, I can go in here and I can just change it, and it doesn't change anything on the map yet. It doesn't actually activate the callback. I'm just changing it because it's considered a state. However, if I put this as input, which I'm not going to do right now, if I did this an input, saved, and ran it, every time I change this, it would automatically update the data. And I don't want that. I have a, a submit button, so I want to wait. I don't want the callback to be activated every time I change this. I want to wait, and then only once I click on the button, I want the data to uh, the app to change according to the data. So let's change it back to state and not input. Don't just be careful not to get confused. This is a dash component, right? This is not. This has nothing to do with this. These are completely different things. All right. So we're taking the uh, the the state of the value of the input. And we're taking the value of the button, or at least the number of clicks that the button has been clicked. And we're going to use this data and return in that function, we're going to turn um, two outputs. One of them is going to be the output state, the children of the output state. So it's going to be the text that's going to go in here. And the second one is just going to be the figure of the graph. So we're going to create uh, the figure inside the graph um, component. Okay, so this is the function. 
And this is how we tie everything, all the callbacks, into the graph and the creation of the web page. So I call that update output. You can call it whatever you want. Um, as you can remember from previous videos, this output, uh, uh, this function has the update output function has two arguments because we have an input and we have a state. So we need two arguments that are going to refer to the component properties. The first one here is the end clicks refers to this. So I just call it num clicks. You can call it whatever you want. And the second one refers to the value of the the input cell, the input state. So I'm going to call it val selected. Okay. So the first thing you want to do, just in case, usually uh, you're going to be using this a lot, is you want to um, say you want the tell the web page to or the dash app to prevent update, to not allow any update. And this comes from right here in the top. Prevent update. We imported it. It's an exception. You want to tell dash to prevent an update, make sure that the callback does not do anything if, or is not uh, activated, if val selected is none. Val selected, remember, is what we have in the input. So all I'm saying is that if val selected this is none, and I hit submit, I don't want the graph to be activated. Because if I did, if I did not put this, in here, what would happen, I will get an error. It would say the button was clicked on and there was none in a non-value in the in the in the input selected, which creates an error because it doesn't know what to read into the graph. So you just want to prevent that if there is a none. And then else, you can say if if there's anything else, if it's not a none, but any other number you want to filter the data. Well, that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to filter the data in order to use this data to put it in the and create the figure. Why are we filtering the data? We don't always have to filter the data, but here we're filtering the data because we want a specific year. We don't want, remember here, we had from 1952 all the way to 2007. We don't want every year. We're not creating an animation or a scatter plot with the different years. We're just using one year. So in this case, we have to filter the data, and this is how we do it. So we're going to call the data df, the data frame, and we're going to use the gap minder, the built-in data within Potly Express, and we're going to query it, and we're going to ask for year equals whatever value was selected right here. This is just format. It's a, it's a method, format method in Python. It's just a method to... Um, uh, it's like a placeholder for uh, inside a string. So I want this, whatever this is, to go inside here. So this is going to be the value selected is going to be the year. Remember, it's going to be either this value selected refers to the input. And this input, you have either a minimum of 1952 to 2007 with steps of five. So you don't, don't have a lot of options. You can't put text. You can't put URLs in there or emails. You're just going to put numbers. Um, and those numbers are going to be inside this query, where year equals, let's say, 2002 or 1997. And that's the data that's going to get pulled. So if we put 2007, we're only going to get data uh, of rows belonging to 2007. So now that we have the data filtered and we have it by the year that we want, now we can actually create the choropleth map. So we're calling the choropleth map from uh, Plotly Express. We're going to use the DF data frame, which is right here. And we're going to use all these different parameters. So let us take a look. We have that link as well. What are these different parameters? Open this link as Spotly Express Coralpleth. You'll see all these different parameters. Um, we're going to use only some of them. Please um, read uh, this if you have the time. Or just pause along the way so you understand what we're looking at. All right, so locations. Locations in a Coralpleth map is, is a way for the map to is a way for the user to tell the map, okay, this is this is what I'm, uh, the country I'm talking about, or this is the region I'm talking about. So we're going to use that um, data frame series, uh, ISO alpha. And ISO alpha is right here, there are three letters. So there's always going to be three letters, and that's how uh, the map can locate that same country. So if you use a different data set, just make sure that if you're using a choropleth, that they have an ISO alpha, or they have whatever you want to call that column, they have these three letters per country, because that's how it recognizes where to put the color. 
The color is going to be life expectancy. So life expectancy has different numbers, 43, probably all the way to 80 something, 85 years. And it's just going to create a sequence of uh, colors based on the life expectancy. As we saw, purple all the way from dark colors for the lower life expectancy to the high, uh, brighter colors for the higher life expectancy. The hover name is going to be country, which means that if I hover over the, a certain part of the map, it's going to tell me the country of that uh, hover, of that where my mouse is. Projection is going to be natural earth, and just, just this just means this, just kind of a, a layout thing. So this is going to be the projection. That's what it looks like this. Natural earth looks like circle, like natural earth. You can put linear or box, and that, that this thing will just change. So it just looks kind of neat that way. Title life expectancy by year, and their color continuous scale is another parameter within Coropleth. And I'm going to use the PX color sequential plasma. Again, everything is in documentation. I have no idea what that means, but I looked it up, and you can see here that the color sequential, where is sequential? Continuous, I think continuous scale, right? And I'm using sequential. If you want to learn more about the different colors, I added another link below. This is the sequential colors, so you don't have to put plasma. You can put, I put plasma, so you can put magma, um, uh, there it is, plotly three, whatever you want. All right, so now we have the figure, but before we return the, um, uh, the values in the, in the function. I want to update a little bit. I want to update the, the layout of the figure. I want the title to be 28, the size 28 of the font, I want, and I want it to be in the middle. X equals 0 0.5 and anchor equal center is, exact, is how you put the title in the middle right above your graph. The margin, this is, I just found it on the on, on the web, on Plotly community forum. This is a way to actually make the uh, the map a little bit bigger. Without that, I think it was only like half the size. So I increased the margins and this looks just a little bit bigger, um, easier for you to see. So now that I updated the, uh, the figure, I can return. I'm ready to return. So I'm returning, remember, I have two outputs. So I'm returning two values. The first value is going to be the children of the output state and the second value is going to be uh, the figure. All right, so we can start with the figure because that's easiest. You can see here is the second value of the return. I'm returning the figure, which is this, this fig, and this figure that we created, the core plus map, based on the data set that we filtered. But the first value inside that div, I'm going to return a string that's going to say the input value was placeholder one, and the button has been clicked placeholder two times. So the placeholder one is going to be val selected, the input value was 2007, 2005, 1952, whatever we choose. And the button has been clicked, num clicks time, so it could be zero times, one time, three times, four times, whatever that is, according to how many times we click the button. And that's it. And this is how we execute the app. And this is what we get. So just as an example, 2007, let's just change this to, I don't know, 1982, submit. You can see how the colors change and you can see that the new input value was 1982 and the button has been clicked one times. I can click it two times or three times, it's gonna change and I can change it once more. Let's go back to 1952, probably things will be a lot darker because um, the times are darker. <laughs> and see how things, even China, India, become a lot darker than before, like they were probably in the 40 uh, years of life expectancy. Tip of the week, I would say just take it one day at a time. At times, you, you think there is, there's so much to learn, there's so much to do, uh, there's so much information out there. Your project will take you a year, two years, or three years to build, or your YouTube channel, or whatever you're working on. Don't worry about it. You can have a long-term goal of what you want to do, Make sure it's a smart goal, but on a short term, just take it day by day, focusing on what you want to do today. If you want to do like X today or you want to do Y, that's only what you want to focus on. Don't focus on all the other letters and all the other combinations. Um, that really helps me when I create these kind of charts and videos and, and titles for the videos. It's a lot to think about, but I just take it day by day. Uh, don't forget to subscribe below. Again, every week you'll get a new video on something new that you can learn in Dash by Plotly or coding with Python. And I think that's it. Have a good day. Thank you.